and welcome to my channel. I am Stephanie and this is the a week 11 weekly wrap up from March the 10th until the 16th. <laughs> This is the weekly wrap up for March or for week 11. Wow, I can't talk right now for some reason. Um, from March the 10th until the 16th. And then, of course, I'm recording it on St. Patrick's Day, which is that Sunday. Happy St. Patrick's Day. I can actually say that. And I have partial freaking Irish in my blood. So, top of the morning to you. Okay, so let's. This week is going to be absolutely crazy. Um, for week 12, I am attending a polycon from Thursday until Sunday. So Sunday's video next week may actually be late because I will just be getting home and then I have to unpack and all kinds of crazy stuff, get back with my family, reconnect because they'll have a weekend, a boys weekend, uh, boys end of the week pretty much thursday friday saturday and sunday i believe they have some fun things that they're going to be doing but i will have to decompress and you know find out and hear about all their adventures and things like that not that they want to hear about my adventures because that's just not how we roll but yeah so that's going to be happening this week so you guys are going to get two pre-filmed videos um for the week and I asked you guys over on Instagram what you guys wanted to see and I think I came up with something that is acceptable that you guys may enjoy but that's not what you're here for right now so let's get to what I read last week and I started off the week finishing up Wrath Elite 7 number 3 by Claire C. O'Reilly, and I place this in Dark Romance. I give this book 4.5 stars. I give it five Steam fans. So freaking hot. Oh my goodness. I read it as an arc. This is the continuation of the Elite Seven Secret Society sort of stories that are written for the Seven Sins by seven different authors. And there are people that are like, oh, I want to read a certain author's book, but I am here to tell you that I think you should shy away from reading these stories out of order. This is the third book, and this book follows Wrath, and Wrath's actual name is Samuel, and this is his story. Him and Patience, who was the girl that is his love interest, I guess you could say, for this story, met when they were young. He had a tough life and he has a twin sister who he did the whole big brother thing for and really took the brunt of the issues that they had when they were young and in a, in a volatile family type thing situation. And then you get to see how Samuel or Wrath thinks that the Elite Seven is going to help him. Now, the reason I said in the beginning of this review that I think you should read them all in order is because these books are very much intertwined. When you get to this book, you will get thrown back into scenes that you saw in book number one and you get a bigger picture of what was actually going on or what was going on with the other guys that were in that same situation. So there's a lot of rehash, but not necessarily rehashing to the point where you're like, okay, I've already heard this part of the story. No, it's like, oh, that's what was going, that's what was really going on. What? Oh, I see a little bit more. And I think that the rest of these stories, even though they're going to be written by different authors, like the first three were, are really going to be a collaborative sort of mass story. I think these authors are really working together to put a full, intricate, layered story together. And it's so far, it is magnificent. I can't wait for the next book, which is Envy. Oh my goodness. Ah, woo, because Wrath, this book, left on this cliffhanger that is just craziness, straight up craziness. 
The next book that I read was Royally Screwed, which is Royally number one by Emma Chase. I place this in contemporary. I give it five humongous stars. I give it five Steam fans, and I listen to it on audiobook. I read this for a Read Bliss project, and this book follows Nicholas and Olivia. He ends up visiting New York where he meets Olivia, and she... Oh, she's so super sassy and independent. I just really, really enjoyed her. Their meeting, they didn't know who each other was when they met. She didn't know who he was. And then when that secret was let out of the bag, lots of things started to happen. And it was just a really fun story. The the sexiness factor was there and the storyline was very beautiful and I really enjoyed this story. The next thing that I read was My Royal Temptation which is Arrogant Heirs number one by Riley Pine. I place this in contemporary. I give this book four stars. I give it four Steam fans and I read it as an ebook. I read it for a Read Bliss project as well and this book follows Nikolai, who is the heir to a nation as well as the other book. So you may figure out the theme of my project, but we're going to keep that secret right now. And he is the prince that is a playboy in this matter. And his kingdom is saying that he needs to get married and he has a tragedy that goes along with the reason why he's not letting anyone in and he's the little man whore. Um, so his father, the king, hires a matchmaker who is Kate. Kate is brought in to matchmake Nikolai with a proper princess or someone of royal nature to become the queen and so that he can take over the kingdom. And I enjoyed this story. There were times where I was like, I'm going to need Kate to get out of her head and really just do the thing, do the thing. And Nikolai, in some ways, was a little bit overly arrogant, just a little. And then by the end of it, I was like, okay, I need to know more about this kingdom and what's going on there. The next book that I read was Instant Connection by Melanie Moreland. And this is an erotic short story. Well, actually, I think it's more of a contemporary short story. But I gave it four stars. I gave it three Steam fans. And I listened to it on my podcast, Read Me Romance. Read, read me romance. Yes. And this book follows Mitch and Mandy. Mandy works at an architectural firm who has a new contractor coming in. And she ends up meeting this guy at the bus stop. It's an insta-love sort of situation or instant connection situation. And I loved how sweet and sexy and fun it was. It wasn't all that erotic, but it definitely had that sweet, fun, sexy match to it because then Mitch is like I want you I had this connection with you and that's just all that's gonna you're gonna you're gonna you're gonna get with me you're gonna come up to my level and that's how we're gonna be so the next book that I read was The Reality of Right and Wrong by Letty Harper I give this book four stars. I give it three Steam fans. I read it as an arc and this book follows Brogan. Oh Brogan Yes, wasn't sure that I was going to like him. This does sort of border on insta-love, but it's insta-love in this way that's just really, really sweet and more about fate and connection and the universe than it is about just, hey, I see you, I want you, and you're going to be mine. So Brogan is this mysterious guy that... Mercy ends up meeting after she finds out that her boyfriend, her fiance, is cheating on her because she decided to surprise him by coming into the town early and she sees him at a bar bumping and grinding all over this other chick that she didn't know who she was and it wasn't her, obviously. So she gets drunk and she's stumbling outside, doesn't know what she's going to do because she's there. She doesn't have a house there. She 
doesn't necessarily have a job completely. Well, Brogan meets her and sort of is like, hey, let me help you out as a friend and takes her aside, but they have this connection. They spend a week together and things start to unfold. And I just really enjoyed the spiritualness of this story and found it to be very interesting. It kept me on my toes. It does have some tropes that are very like predictable, but at the same time, were done in this twisty sort of different way that kept me on the edge of my seat to find out what was gonna happen. The next book that I finished last week and the last book that I finished last week was Outlander, which is book number one by Diana Gabaldon. And this is historical fiction. I give it, still give it five stars. I give it three Steam fans now that I'm instituting Steam fans. Uh, this was a reread and this was read for Romance genre -thon, which is Irish and Scottish. And like many of you know, Outlander is amazing. I still think it's amazing. This book follows Claire and she ends up time traveling back 200 years to the 1740s where she meets Jamie. Jamie is oh, this Highlander and he's Scottish and he's the lair, but he's on the run. And oh my goodness, I never realized how much is put into this book. Let me just say that the narration and the narrator for this series is absolutely amazing. She is the reason that I am like, okay, I'm down for this commitment uh, to read all these books. And so I'm really enjoying that. I have decided that I'm going to change the sort of format of what I'm doing with that as well. So you guys will see in the future how I'm doing this reread. I forgot, I have a giveaway going on. Make sure you check out the Romancing Rappahannock video if you like signed books by authors because I'll be closing that giveaway next weekend and picking a winner from the people that answer the questions correctly. <sighs> Scoring three points. Yes, there's three points that you can score for that for that challenge. The giveaway information is in that description box for Romancing Rappahannock and I'll make sure to link that video up there as well. On to what I am currently reading. Like I said in the beginning of this video, it's gonna be oh, a super busy week with a Polycon starting on Thursday, me going up to Arlington to participate in all the fun and amazingness of that is a Polycon period. But I am currently reading Mouth to Mouth, Beach Kingdom number one by Tessa Bailey. And this book follows Rory and Olive. Rory is this young man. He's about 24, 25 years old, I believe. And he's a freshly out of the pen. But his family runs a bar and they're lifeguards. And in one day he runs into this young woman who is new to the scene, new to the area, new to the college town, but it is the summertime and there he sort of saves her from getting smashed by a bus. And there's this sort of spark between them. Her name is Olive, I think I said already. Uh, and I'm about 20% into this and I'm really enjoying it. I know from the teasers that I have seen that I'm going to continue to enjoy this because I want to get to some of the parts that I just was like, oh, I saw the teaser and was like, oh, I got to read this book. Whew. So the next book that I am reading or currently reading is Fear Me, which is Broken Love number one by B.B. Reed. And I'm about 40% into this. This book follows Lake and Kieran. 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 Yeah. So I have issues with this book. I'm reading this because I will be meeting BB Reed at a Polycon and I wanted to, you know, have something under my belt to say, Hey, I've read your books or a book of yours, something you have written. And I'm a little, little, I'm not sure how I'm feeling about this book because the characters are 17 and 18 year old kids however the, the story isn't I don't think is a YA story 
even though the characters are 17 and 18 years old and they're it's set in high school, but the topics and the darkness of this story, ooh, it is very, um, yeah, it's a very dark. It's very dark. It, this is one of those books, if you're not into dark romance, and I'm really hoping that the romance gets thrown in there at some point, because currently it's just real dark and psychological thriller sort of thing, because Lake is afraid of Kiernan to the point that I'm at. She's like legit afraid of him, but at the same time turned on by him. And I'm like... Ooh, this is like abusive and ooh, just, mm, I don't, mm, not exactly sure how I'm feeling about this book pretty much at this point, but we will see. I'm gonna let it roll. I'm listening to it on audiobook, so we're gonna get through it. The next book that I'm also reading will be Heat Stroke, which is Beach Kingdom number two by Tessa Bailey. This is a new release. It released today, early. And go check that out. This book is Tessa Bailey's Eminem. So male, male romance uh, from one of the brothers that is heard of in Beach Kingdom number one. So I have already met one of the main characters for this book in that last book and I'm really excited to get to his story um but it's male male so I'm like um, I'm here for it I'm here for it I am also going to be getting to Lust in Translation by Rachel Robinson it releases March the 22nd and Envy by M.N. Forgy but that one releases March the 25th which is the fourth book in the Elite Seven series. So I really hope that I get my art copy soon so I can get on that. So those are the books that I read last week, the books that I am currently reading. Have you read any of those books? What are your thoughts on them? Let me know down in the comments. Will you be going to a Polycon? Will I see you there? Make sure you stop and say hi. I'll be the one with the fly twists and the camera attached to my hand for a lot of it and saying hi to my book friends that I get to see every once in a while. As always, if you enjoyed this video, please give me a big thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Also, there is a feedback form down in the description box so you guys can help me improve my channel. Thank you for watching and we will see you guys later.